if pain is more real than anything else, what's even more real than pain is whatever we have to fight off the pain. And that's free speech. It's identical with freedom of thought. It's associated with this capacity and necessity to listen deeply. They're flip sides of the same coin, to use a terrible cliché. And all the clinical data we have, including the more stringently research-oriented research clinical inquiry, indicates quite clearly that the, ex the exchange of information like that, the generation of, of, of semantic and emotional information in a state of relative freedom, the revelation of those thoughts, and then the discursive analysis of those thoughts, say, and then the implementation into action and the testing of them, that is the pathway to health insofar as that can be attained by, say, psychological or spiritual means. And so that's why free speech is not just another freedom or right among many. It's certainly not viewpoint diversity or anything like that. It's the, it's the mechanism by which we generate the conceptions that allow us to organize our experience in the world. It's that mechanism. And more than that, it's the mechanism that allows us to reformulate and criticize those conceptions when they've become outdated and sterile to dissolve them into a chaos that we have to contend with while it's occurring and then to reanimate them in a new form so that we can move into the future. And so if you're concerned with the oppressed, let's say, why in the world would you oppose free speech? It's the only thing the oppressed have. And if you don't understand that, I would say, well, that's either an ignorance that's so deep that you should remediate it as rapidly as possible, or a malevolence that's so appalling that you should face it even though you'll face it at your peril. And so you kind of come to a university like this that's been a bastion of free speech, in a country that's been a bastion of free speech, and a light unto the world in that regard for a thousand years, and all due credit to all of you for that. It's like, don't forget this. This is the fundamental thing, say, the entire Judeo-Christian enterprise to this date has been an attempt in some sense to elevate to the highest place the notion of the divine redemptive word. And there's no truth that's deeper than that, and that's that.